Hello and welcome to my channel again, Books, Ink, and Paper. I'm Lori Johnson and I'm here today in my library, which is different, I know, from my previous videos. I thought it was about time to show you that I actually do have books in my space and this lighting isn't as great as my office and I don't have as much wonderful equipment out here as I do in my office. You might can hear the train, whereas out there, in there, some of that noise is blocked. Um, but I'm going to give it a shot and see what happens and we'll go from there. I'll be changing up this channel and developing some things so we could be doing this in a whole different way in the future. So today my topic is about mysteries. I had said that my one of my goals in 2019 is to read more mysteries and so I wanted to share with you first my top 10 favorite mystery writers. Then later I'm going to have a video about the top 10 mystery writers I'd like to read more of this year and kind of go from there. Periodically I'll check in about these goals and, and tell you about the books that I've read. So in my top 10, the number 10 on the list is Laura Childs. I love her Tea Shop Mystery series. I'm not crazy about the Scrapbooking series, ironically, but I do love the Tea Shop series with Theodosia and the lovely little cast of characters that lives in Charleston with her. It's a cozy mystery series, you know, which are pretty, there's a formula to them. There's not a lot of thought-provoking plot development or interesting deduction pretty solid similar stories but good i like them and again this is my favorite version this is not the first one this and this one is quite far in she's written a lot of them if you find that you like them you'll be able to read a lot of them because there's quite some number of them Another one of my favorites, number nine, is Carolyn Haynes. She's local to me. She's in the Mobile, Alabama area. She was in a faculty um, lead at, I think, University of South Alabama. She might still be teaching there. She teaches creative writing. But um, I like her, her novels a lot. So this is in her Sarah Booth Delaney Bones series. All of the titles have the word bones in them. This is one of the most recent ones, I think. They're funny, they're cozy, um, the characters are very quirky, they're set in Mississippi in a fictional town in Mississippi, and I just really do enjoy them. Over the years, I have really enjoyed, she comes to our library and she's one of the funniest people I know. This one is actually more my favorite though. These are older um, time settings. The first one is actually called The Book of Beloved, which I have in my shelf behind me. And then this, The House of Memory is the second in this series. And she has a third one as well. And these are set, I want to say, right after World War I, the first one takes place. And this one is around the, well, I don't want to spoil anything, but it's around one of my favorite characters in literature. So that's kind of interesting. Um, but they're very well developed. The main character, Raisa James, is a psychic, and so she sees specters, and uh, she works together with a, another guy who's um, maybe a medium, maybe has some special powers, maybe doesn't. Uh, but I really like them. They're solidly written and maybe a little bit deeper than a cozy for sure. Neat, neat lady. Diane Mott Davidson is one of my favorites. They're pretty cozy as well, although uh, generally speaking, a little bit more depth, I think, in characters as well as in some of the ways in which people meet their demise. Um, she's, these are set in Colorado. Goldie is the, she's a caterer. She's the main detective and she's married to a real detective with the police department. So that's fun. Um, and they're, uh, they also include recipes, but they're very well uh, thought out, and I have enjoyed them for years. There are a lot of them as well, and they're, they're just solid and, and well done. The next on my list is uh, Tana French. Tana French has a deeper level, a bit of police procedural, um, more than 
cozy, uh, a little more difficult subject matter, lots of depth, lots of intricate plot design, um, very satisfying. She has a lot of them. Many of them are in a series, um, but I don't think you would have to read them in order. Uh, I haven't read tons of them. She's one of the, just spoiler alert, she's one of the writers I'd like to read more of this year, but I, I think they're very well done. The next one is on my Kindle. It's Anthony Horowitz. I recently read The Word is Murder. It took me one book to put him on the list uh, for, of uh, number six of top mystery writers that I really love. The Word is Murder was fantastic. It is a, it's, it's written, he narrates it. If you're not careful, you might think it is nonfiction, that it's a true story. Uh, he has a sidekick who is, a detective who's very narcissistic and a bit egotistical and wants Anthony to write a story about his investigation of a murder. He's no longer with the police department for reasons that are somewhat um, unknown. And he's very bossy. And Anthony is a screenwriter in real life, as well as in The Word is Murder. And he's actually written some screenplays for Midsummer Murders, which is one of my favorite series. It's actually on Netflix, but it's also been on PBS. So he's, he's a screenwriter in the book, as well as in real life. And he's, he's a very good writer. He's also been commissioned to write for uh, the estate of Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, and he's, or maybe he asked to, I don't know, but anyway, he's re-engaged the uh, Sherlock Holmes character in some mysteries. One is called Magpie Murders, or several of them. I think there will be more of them, so that is something I'm really interested in exploring, but he's very very, the word is murder was highly recommended to me on a podcast and it wasn't a book writing or book reading podcast. Actually, it was a podcast about, um, other things, but the, they sometimes talk about books and it, I, I was really happy. I listened to it. He narrated it. It was cool. Really, really cool. Number four on my list is Sophie Hanna. Sophie Hanna is also a person who has resurrected Agatha Christie Mysteries. She wrote The Monogram Murders, and she was given permission by uh, the estate to be able to do that. She also writes some of her own, and she's, she's very clever. Um, neat, neat plot twists and a neat resurrection of the, of the Agatha Christie style. I actually also recommend on a podcast called Harper Collins Presents. She reads Agatha Christie's After the Funeral in its unabridged form, and that was very entertaining. It's, I think, six parts maybe, maybe more. It's been a while since I listened to it. I love Harper Collins Presents as a podcast. Really loved her um, her. Uh, narration of After the Funeral, and After the Funeral is a great Agatha Christie read. The next one, who is number four on my list, is Kate Atkinson. Kate Atkinson writes mysteries. Case histories is uh, actually one of her best, and her character in case histories, Jason... I think his name was Jason. I'll put it in the link below. Um, she has a series of murder mysteries that, uh, that he is the detective who, well, he's no longer a police detective, but he's a private investigator who carries on solving some unsolved crimes. This one is a bit different, but it has a lot of mysterious qualities about it, and I really like it. I highly recommend Kate Atkinson. She also does some historical fiction. I read Life After Life, A God in Ruins, loved them, set in World War II um, with, with time, um, you know, present day as well as flashbacks to the war. And now I'm reading Transcription, which is also set in the, at the beginning of World War II. Amazing writer. Case Histories is on Netflix as a series. Um, no, no, I'll take that back. 
no, no. I have so many streaming services because we don't have cable. It's on Prime Video. Case Histories is on Prime Video. If you want to take a look at the um, screen version of Case Histories, it's, it's very good. I like it a lot. Number three on my list, Sherlock Holmes. This is the complete Sherlock Holmes Volume 2 by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. He has remained one of my favorites since childhood. I used to watch Sherlock Holmes movies on Saturday mornings. You had a choice of Sherlock Holmes one week and Charlie Chan the next. I think that probably had a great deal to do with my love of mysteries and detectives, and I have I was smitten ever since then with his impeccable deduction, his um, relationship with Holmes, uh, and or the relation, relationship between Holmes and Watson, and just the level of, of intricacy in some of the forward-thinking kinds of ways in which he investigates the minute details that he was able to pick up and and craft into these really well written stories. I also like the adaptations from book to film, not just of the older Basil Rathbone versions of these stories. Basil Rathbone was my favorite screen Sherlock Holmes at that time, but now of course Robert Downey Jr. has done a couple of movies with Sherlock Holmes as his character, and also there's a series Benedict Cumberbatch has participated in with um, the guy who played The Hobbit as Holmes. Freeman is his last name. Nevertheless, all well done. There's not a Sherlock Holmes movie I think that I've ever disliked. And the same is true for all of his stories as well. So he's number three on my list. Hence, probably why I really love Anthony Horowitz too. Number two on my list, P.D. James. I, I, you can probably see and probably know that I love books that are set in England and I love authors that are British and P.D. James has a, a, a lovely detailed story as well. Lots of impeccable plot development. Adam Dalgleish is her detective. He's with Scotland Yard, very methodical, very um, procedural. Some difficult topics. This is also not a cozy, but but really solid storytelling and always reliable, P.D. James. Now my number one. Since I was young, I have loved, learned to love Agatha Christie. My sister introduced me to Agatha Christie when I was probably nine years old. You know, we didn't have a lot of middle grade books to read at that time, although I did read Nancy Drew and probably could have could have added Carolyn Keene to the list. I guess she would be probably my 11. They were lovely when I was a child, but I don't reread them a lot. I collect them. I don't reread them often. Agatha Christie, though, was one of my first mystery writers that I loved and remains on that list. I reread them. I had a huge collection of them that I did lose in a bit of a storm that we had here. Um, no small storm for sure. So I'm recollecting them now. This is actually her first ever. It was published in 1921. Obviously, this is not a first edition, but uh, you can get them in a variety of ways. Sometimes they show up at book uh, sales, used bookstores, but you can get them at uh, Book Outlet. And I get a lot of them at Book Depository because I like some of the interesting covers. But um, Intricate plots, several detectives. Miss Marple is my favorite. I do like Hercule Poirot. He is a bit like Sherlock Holmes in that he notices very, very subtle details that otherwise go unnoticed by others. But Miss Marple does too. One of my favorite Miss Marple novels is 450 from Paddington, where her friend discovers, sees a murder on the train that is stopped next to hers on the tracks, waiting to go into the station. She tells everyone that she saw a woman being strangled. They can't find the body. They can't find anything, any evidence of any foul play. And Miss Marple's 
friend comes to her and says, I've seen a murder on the 450 from Paddington and Miss Marple believes her and goes about to see if she can discover what happened to the woman and to the murderer and to anything that might have been involved in that particular crime. Love it. Love all of them. Very, very solid. Will always be my top favorite. There's no question. I will not come and do another video in five years and say, yeah, I'm off the Agatha Christie's. Never. I can read them over and over and over again. And I hope that you will share with me in the comments below some of your favorite mystery writers, as well as some that you would like to read. If you've read these, share your comments about them. And as always, happy reading. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe, if you will, and recommend me to others if, that's, if you're so inclined. And I will see you soon with another list of mysteries to read. Bye-bye.